वेलकम टू लेक्चर नंबर 48 ऑफ फजी सेट्स लॉजिक एंड सिस्टम्स एंड एप्लीकेशंस इन दिस लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस फजी रूल्स एंड फजी रीजनिंग सो इन दिस लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू फर्स्ट टेक अप द फजी इफ देन रूल सो let me uh, before going ahead tell you that fuzzy if then rule is an essential component of a fuzzy system so without fuzzy if and then rules there is no fuzzy system so it this means that in any fuzzy system we must have a set of fuzzy if then rules a fuzzy if then rule is also known as fuzzy rule fuzzy implication or fuzzy conditional statement so fuzzy if and then rule has a form of if x is a then y is b so this is the syntax of syntax of any fuzzy if and then rules so here we have two components first component of this fuzzy if then rule is the antecedent or premise so this part is called the antecedent or premise and then the second part which is just after then is called the consequence or conclusion so in any fuzzy if then rule will have a antecedent part or premise part and consequent part or conclusion part and it is very important here to note that antecedent part in fuzzy if and then rule is always fuzzy this means that a is always fuzzy a is a linguistic value and which is always always a fuzzy quantity a fuzzy set whereas we have the consequent part or conclusion part and this consequent and or conclusion part has b and this b can be either can be either a fuzzy set or a crisp value and this crisp value can be expressed in terms of some function which is actually the function of uh, the generic variable so we can say that the a that has been taken here in this fuzzy rule fuzzy if then rule a is a linguistic value a is a linguistic value characterized by a fuzzy set with the universe of discourse capital x and b here b here can be either b here can be either a linguistic value and of course we all know that a linguistic value can always be represented by a fuzzy set so a 
is a linguistic value a is a linguistic value characterized by a fuzzy set whereas b can be either a linguistic value that means a fuzzy set or a crisp value expressed in terms of a function of linguistic variables used in this uh, for example here the linguistic variable is x so this is the linguistic variable all right so now often x is a is called antecedent or premise as i have already mentioned here while y is b is called the consequence or the conclusion so this must be understood very clearly and as i have already mentioned the fuzzy if and then rule is very important component of any fuzzy system and without a set of fuzzy if and then rule the fuzzy system cannot be cannot exist so let us now move ahead and we discuss a fuzzy if then rule where we have let's say the fuzzy if and then rule like this like uh, if x is a then y is b so let us first understand that this can also be represented by a entails b or a coupled with b so please understand here as it is written here that there are two ways to interpret a fuzzy if then rule first way is a coupled with b or the other way i mean the second way is a entails b so fuzzy if then rule when it is written in that syntax that i have already mentioned like if a x a is a x is a then y is b so this can also be interpreted like this like a coupled with b or a entails with a, a entails b so assuming a and b both or for the sets so let us please understand let us assume here that a and b both are the fuzzy sets so when we assume a and b means for a and b for a and b both fuzzy sets all right so please understand why are we saying this that for a and b both fuzzy set because b can be here in fuzzy if and then rule b can be either crisp or fuzzy but here we are assuming for this discussion that we have both a and b fuzzy sets so assuming a and b both fuzzy sets if and then rule can be defined as a fuzzy relation so this is very important to note when we have a and b both fuzzy sets so in this case this a entails b a couples coupled with b can be regarded as a relation and this is represented by r on a space x cross y where this x is the universe of discourse for the generic variable small x and y is the universe of discourse for generic variable small y if b is the fuzzy set so this needs to be noted so when we have a relation when we have a fuzzy relation in between 
capital A and B, we can always write this as A cross B. We have already done this. So, uh, R is equal to A entails B is equal to A cross B. You can see here. So, this way we can write that for continuous fuzzy set, this is for the continuous fuzzy set that we have the integral sign x cross y that means the, the space, the, uni the universe of discourse becomes capital X cross capital Y mu r x comma y oblique x comma y for every x y belonging into capital X cross Y and similarly for discrete for discrete here we have the representation as capital R A entails B is equal to A cross B is equal to the summation X cross Y mu R X comma y oblique x comma y for every x comma y belonging into capital X cross y as the universe of discourse. So, what we have seen here is that if we have in fuzzy if and then rule both A and B, A is coming from the antecedent part, our premise part and y and b is coming from the consequence or conclusion part. So, if we have a and b both fuzzy sets that are coming from a fuzzy set, fuzzy rule, if and then fuzzy rule, then we can write the r relation fuzzy set in terms of a and b. That means a cross b and a cross b for continuous we have seen here and for discrete we have seen here as to how we can write. We have already done, we have uh, already discussed in detail a fuzzy relation. So, we can uh, accordingly manage to write the relation, fuzzy relation matrix. So, if a entails b is interpreted as or a coupled with B, so both are same. So A entails B, A, A, A and then arrow, forward arrow, B is interpreted as A coupled with B. Then it can be interpreted by a fuzzy relation R as we have just discussed. So for continuous, so, for continuous, the relation can be written as, R can be written as here, A coupled with B is equal to A cross B, means the Cartesian product, simple Cartesian product, as we have already discussed in previous lectures. So, here, the mu of x, y, how will be? find this mu of x y is here. So, this mu of x y you see here mu of x y this mu of x y we can get by suitably uh, taking the Cartesian product means we can we can get by taking the by using the T norm. So, Here, this is nothing but this gives us mu of r x y. So, this we can get by taking the, the t norm of a and b. Means, we take the t norm of mu a of x and mu b of y. So, as we have already done this t norm in uh, previous lectures, so the fuzzy relation r 
and T, let's say we have two fuzzy relationships, right? And then accordingly, we can have the T norms, T norm operators we can apply and then we can say that there are four different fuzzy relations which are defined using four commonly used T norm operators. What does this mean? This means that we have, we have in T norm, we have multiple, we have multiple T norm operators. So we have four commonly used T norm operators. First is A coupled B using minimum T norm operator. And then the second is the A coupled V is using algebraic product T norm operator. Then we have the third one is A coupled B using bounded product T norm operator. And then we have the A coupled B using drastic sum product operator. So this way we can use any of these T norm operators suitably to get the mu r x y and this was for the continuous and the same lines we can get the r for discrete in relation matrix the relation uh, in between a and b for discrete fuzzy sets so let us now go one by one so fuzzy rule interpretation as a coupled b here and this a and b are coming from the if and then fuzzy rule. So let us take the first case where we have the minimum T norm operator. So we have let us first uh, type of T norm operator. So first type of T norm operator is min. So for continuous fuzzy set, fuzzy sets A and B where this R is the relation fuzzy set which is coming out by coming out from A cross B. So the Cartesian product of A and B. So we write here the relation fuzzy relation set as R min because min is here denoting that the minimum T norm operator that is being used for getting the fuzzy relation in between A and B. So this can be represented by this and similarly when A and B are is discrete fuzzy sets then this R mean can be written as this. So here we have the fuzzy relation set when we use min. So we can write min T norm and then for discrete here we have when we have A and B both are discrete. So this way we can represent the fuzzy relation matrix fuzzy sorry fuzzy relation set and when we have instead of min as the T norm, the algebraic product T norm. So when the when we have algebraic product T norm operator, then we simply instead of taking min, we write we take the product in between mu A and mu B. You can see here. So we take the product here we take the product here so mu a of x cross mu b of y so we take the product in case of algebraic product t norm operator so and we write this as r a p you can see here and similarly for discrete r a p so for discrete a and b for di uh, discrete fuzzy sets a and b we write the relation fuzzy set by r a p which is nothing but a cross b summation x cross y as the uh, universe of discourse 
and then here again we have the product here again we have the product in between mu a of x and mu b of y and then rest of the things remain the same so only difference here is that the this operator here this operator gets changed so when we have min we use we simply take the min when we use min uh, t norm we take the min uh, uh, sign here and inverted uh, uh, when we take min it means we take the minimum of mu a of x and mu b of y and when we use product then simply we multiply similarly when we take the bounded product t norm so we use this formula we have already done this uh, when we have discussion uh, discussed the all t norm operators so here we have bounded product so for bounded product in between bounded product of mu a of x and mu b of y we write zero and then the max sign of means the max in between zero and mu a of x plus mu b of y minus one similarly when we have discrete fuzzy set we write it this way so let us understand now that as to how the various t norm operators change the computations so you hear you see here the fourth one is a coupled b using drastic t norm operator so here when we have drastic operators we use for drastic uh, uh, computation for drastic product computation this function so when we use this for mu a of x and mu b of y we can write it like this mu r dp of x comma y and this mu r dp x comma y can be computed by the drastic product t norm so this way we have seen that as to how we can manage to get the fuzzy relation set by using all the four types of t norm operators and if we have here an example we take an example here where we have a high speed s which is characterized by a fuzzy set so s high is the fuzzy set with the universe of discourse s 20 25 30 45 50 and we have another fuzzy set here p high and with the universe of discourse 1 2 3 4 so we we have two we have two discrete fuzzy sets so both I can write here both the fuzzy sets are the discrete fuzzy sets. So S high and P high both are discrete fuzzy sets where S P both represent the speed and brake pressure respectively. So determine the implication relation that means the relation fuzzy set for this. So S high and then here uh, s high coupled with p high using the interpretation the same interpretation that we have just discussed so let us quickly use all four operators four t norm operators and let's see how we are getting various relation fuzzy sets so we have four t norm uh, operators so for the first t norm operator that is the min t norm operator we can quickly find the r min the relation fuzzy set the relation fuzzy set r 
and since we are using min t norm operator so we use the min here see the here we use min operator as the t norm so we have already done this exercise in previous lecture so when we do that we are going to get this as the fuzzy relation matrix so this is fuzzy fuzzy relation matrix r min r min similarly when we use the algebraic t norm operator here so then now the computation becomes little bit different so instead of taking min of the membership values we multiply the mem respective membership values you can see here so like 0.2 multiplied by 0.4 so this is uh, the case when we have uh, the prod uh, the algebraic product so we simply take the product of the membership values so this uh, fuzzy relation matrix rap so please understand that this rap is a fuzzy relation set which is represented in the matrix form so rap is a fuzzy relation set so fuzzy relation set rap which is represented in the form of a matrix so when we take the multiplication when we do the multiplication in between the respective membership values so now what we are getting is this so this is nothing but the fuzzy relation matrix fuzzy relation matrix r a p when we have used the algebraic product t norm similarly let us now take the third type of t norm operator so when we take the bounded product t norm let's see what happens so when we take bounded product t norm so we use this formula this relation this expression for finding the uh, bounded product t norm and this is nothing but we take the max in between 0 and the mu s high of s plus mu p high of p minus 1 so this way when we apply this to all the pair of membership values here you can see all these values and please note that when we are taking the when we are finding the relation in between a and b discrete fuzzy set here and since we are taking the uh, a cross b for getting the relation fuzzy set r b p r may be uh, whatever uh, type of t norm we apply but a and b must be multipliable so this means the order of a and b should be in such a way that they can be multiplied so these two matrices can be multiplied so whatever we are getting after this is here so when we use the bounded product t norm the relation the fuzzy relation fuzzy relation matrix is if it if i write it by r b p so this is fuzzy relation matrix and this comes out when we in between when we use a and b uh, discrete fuzzy sets and we use the bounded product t norm operator 
so now let us take the fourth kind of um, t norm operator that is drastic product t norm operator and we all know that when we use drastic product t norm operator this expression applies this means that if mu p high of p is 1 then mu r dp of s p is equal to mu s high s and then if we have mu s high s is equal to 1 then mu p then mu r dp of s comma p will be mu p high of p otherwise the mu r dp s comma p will be 0 so when we do that when we apply this condition then the r dp which is here which is the fuzzy relation matrix uh, based on the drastic product t norm operator we get here rdp so this way we have seen that as to how we can get the fuzzy relation matrix by using various kinds of t norms all four kinds of t norms that we have used in previous uh, lectures so the first was the minimum t norm operator and then the second one was the algebraic product t norm operator the third one was the bounded product t norm operator and the fourth one was the drastic product t norm operator so all these four types of t norm operators we have already studied and we are applying this here to get the relation built by using all these four kinds of operators t norm operators so with this uh, i would like to stop here in the next lecture we will continue with the fuzzy rules and fuzzy reasoning thank you